with uh, for, without further ado, I'd like to start now with uh, with my part of the presentation, and I'd like to introduce a little bit um, on on what is Waygate Technologies. Um, so some or many of you may 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 have heard about G Inspection Technologies. And that's where we're coming from, uh, coming from. So we used to be GE inspection technologies, and due to uh, the separation of um, uh, Baker Hughes and GE, um, this new uh, brand, this new new business unit was cre created in Baker Hughes, uh, and the brand name is Waygate Technologies. Uh, we are, we were, and we are the the global market leader in non-destructive testing. And I'm quickly introducing our different modalities. Modalities, though, though I am from X-ray. A short overview on what we what else we have and and like Jan said also in the in the title of the um, of the presentation what we what we strive for is to ensure your product safety quality and also of course the product of or productivity of product introduction and manufacturing in many many industries um, in total we have a long history and we have a big team around the globe um, operating in 80 countries and have more than 1500 people um, uh, a little short overview on the industries we serve. Um, I'll go into this uh, in detail in, in uh, a little bit more in detail. Um, but we, of course, serve main industries like aerospace, uh, where safety is, is paramount, automotive, again, safety and, and, and quality, electronics. Um, uh, so these are our top three traditional quote unquote segments. But we are also operating in other industries uh, like additive manufacturing, the energy sector, oil and gas, transport, and the steel industry. With our all total portfolio and modalities we provide in our products. Um, when I talk about modalities, I'm referring to what I what is on this slide. So in non-destructive testing, uh, we are using different um, systems, sensors, imaging uh, methods. To, to actually do the non-destructive, perform the non-destructive testing task. Um, and um, I start with uh, what is with what is closest to my heart, uh, which is X-ray and computer tomography, um, where we have 2D inspection and 3D systems, which we will focus on today. Um, beyond that, um, we, we have a wide variety of uh, equipment for X-ray in the field, which we call field ra ra radiography, mainly um, and focused on 2D. Uh, here, the equipment is portable. We um, we have films, uh, we have portable detectors and portable X-ray sources where you bring your X-ray equipment to the part, um, like a pipeline. Uh, or um, like a heat exchanger in a power plant, which needs to inspect it. Beyond that, we have modulated, uh, we have eddy current um, uh, portable systems. We have uh, remote visual inspection, which are essentially video boroscopes um, uh, with uh, sophisticated technologies, like also the ability to probe um, surfaces and measure on them. And last but not least, we have a wide portfolio of ultrasound equipment, both portable, but um, also a fully integrated uh, automated inspection uh, um, ultrasound um, testing machine. The portfolio is rounded up with uh, uh, software we obviously have to run the equipment, but also to analyze the data. And uh, very, very importantly, we have a global services network which can support our customers both uh, in the field for uh, after sales, like training remote services, spare parts, repairs, and, and also um, we have offerings in our solution centers where we where we test your parts um, uh, in our uh, with our equipment to figure out a, a can can this technology be used to address your challenge or we also will have a pay by scan service in these centers. So that's the overall portfolio of Wega Technologies. And now uh, we go into a little bit the history of evolution of X-ray. Um, uh, and uh, actually, the history, as I said, is more than 125 years old. Um, the, 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 the legacy of, uh, of uh, what is now Waygate goes back to 1892, when the Seifert company um, was founded in Hamburg in northern Germany. Uh, and um, then we go, um, Seifert was, was one of the leading uh, players in industrial X-ray for a very long time and then 2001 Seifert was acquired by Aqua, Aqua and the T. Um, in 1999 uh, Phoenix X-Ray was founded, so much younger than Seifert, but also uh, already uh, quite a success story. And in 2004 
uh, GE acquired uh, Aqua NDT, and with Aqua NDT, a, a wide portfolio, including X ray, but also ultrasound. Um, and in 2007, uh, uh, Phoenix X ray was acquired by GE. So, and then that's the portfolio basically, we were, were, were the heritage was complete. So we, when GE acquired all these brands and then created this wide portfolio of NDT solutions. Um, and up until uh, 2017, uh, mid of 2017, when uh, GE acquired a majority sharehold of uh, Baker Hughes, we, we, were, we were called G Inspection Technologies. Um, and then there was a slight rebranding to um, inspection technologies within the Baker Hughes and GE business. And then in 20, end, of 20, end of 2019, um, the uh, separation was announced. And in early 2020, we launched this brand, Waygate Technology. So that's a little bit to put the whole story together to understand what Waygate Technology is and where we are coming from. Um, short intro on our key customer segments i already did i would like to give, get a little bit more into the details especially on the different applications we serve um here you see again uh, the, the 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 range of industry segments or some call it vertical segments uh, we we support um and i'd like to give you some insight in in, in the different applications specific in the industries in these industry segments in aviation x-ray and ct systems are mainly used to inspect um uh, safety critical parts like like the blades and jet engines when veins and also structural components like castings and in, in uh, recently last 10 years mainly a lot of, of new um methods uh, uh, in manufacturing and also technology in terms of, of material was introduced. That's why we also have a lot of inspection in the composite space, uh, both carbon fiber reinforced polymers, but also CMCs. Um, in automotive, um, there is a, a wide range of applications. Recently, we have, again, critical safety components and castings, but also complex uh, drivetrain car parts like uh, electric, uh, like like the engine blocks or, or, or uh, um, the cylinder heads. And, uh, and as recent years, um, like three, four years, uh, cars became connected and also they became, uh, the, the, the drivetrain of the cars is changing from combustion to electromobility. We've, we are seeing new applications and there's one big area is the batteries, the battery system, the battery cells, which are now inspected with our technologies. But also we have a lot of electronics in the cars where we inspect uh, circuit boards, sensors, uh, connectors and uh, multi um, material assemblies. Next area is electronics. Again, we have in consumer electronics a lot of batteries in the wearables, in the in the, um, in the uh, smartphones, in the watches, um, in which we inspect uh, with our technologies, as well as uh, the full assembly, as well as the sub assembly, down to the um, circuit board or even semiconductor level. Um, so the main industries, as already mentioned. Uh, and then uh, we have uh, additional spaces which we serve. One big area is the edit additive manufacturing space, which again, of course, is used in aviation and automotive and other areas. Um, and here we analyze the prototype, but also the for critical parts, the end use parts like um, printed uh, fuel nozzles or printed uh, blades um, uh, uh, to speak about some. Another area is research and development, very wide. Of course, you have R&D in all these industries, uh, which we support uh, on the one hand. On the other, we have uh, public uh, research, and that can be pretty exotic uh, beyond engineering. Uh, we have, uh, we have uh, geology, we have material science, we have bio biology, or even paleontology, where, where museums are, are using our equipment to, for instance, scan fossils. Um, uh, some areas which are a little bit smaller are the power generation uh, part and also the oil and gas and power gen. We have similar parts then uh, in the uh, aviation industries. Uh, again, something like uh, blades from from gas and uh, gas turbines, for instance. Um, and in oil and gas, we have we have some areas where our equipment is used to inspect um, weldings or uh, drill cores. Um, so that's an overview of the application segments. Um, now I would like to give you a short insight in how an X-ray machine actually works, but that's very briefly, and and, and then a, a quick overview of the portfolio before we come to the main part of the presentation, which is the overview 
of the new of the new uh, 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 technology we re re introduced in the last two or three years. Um, how does a CT machine work or an X-ray machine work? Um, in, in a nutshell, it's a pretty simple setup. So you have an X-ray source which emits uh, the the radiation. You need to penetrate your part, which is in the center somewhere of the of the X-ray beam, and you, then you need then you need a sensor or a device which detects the X-rays. And then depending on the part geometry, the part density, you have like a shade shadow radiograph. Everybody should is be familiar with this from from uh, medical applications, um, and uh, the this, the sensor is in these days pretty sophisticated uh, um, metrics uh, of uh, photodiodes um, coupled to a uh, to a material which is called scintillator, which con converts the X rays into visible light and then finally into an electronic signal. Um, and then when you take, um, when you combine all these components, the source, the detector, and uh, a mechanical device to, to, to move your part around, you create basically uh, what is called an X-ray machine. And for a CT machine, you need one uh, very important component. You need to be able to somehow rotate the part in this beam. And in the in the rotation, you take a lot of of of, of X-ray shots, uh, typically several hundred to even several thousand of images, and then you put this in a in a algorithm and create a three-dimensional representation. So that that that's typically a, a X-ray. Sorry, system. may I quickly well, interrupt? Uh, Oliver, We're seeing you sharing. Your... Yeah. Oh yes, sorry. Hmm. I stopped sharing. Okay. Yeah, yeah somebody else is sharing. Yeah, yeah that is uh, should not happen. Uh, Thanks for letting me know. Yeah. Okay. Now it's again. It's back. Uh, yeah. Thank you. Okay. So um, I, I I think I was interrupted when <laughs> going from from the the the. the cone beam scanner to the fan beam scanner. So so again, uh, summarizing X-ray source, uh, detector, and a manipulator, and you take a lot of X-ray shots, and then you can combine them to a three-dimensional uh, data set. There is also, here's somebody, can this? Yeah, somebody. I think we have someone from Asia sharing their screen. Yeah, please stop doing this, and Oliver, maybe. Oh, Just, when that happens again, we need to remove this participant, unfortunately, from the. Yeah. Mean. Okay. So, um, and the, uh, uh, the the second the second um, uh, principle of scanning uh, a part in in uh, in a CT scanner. Uh, would be what we call a fan beam CT. So where you don't have a, fl a flat panel uh, two-dimensional detector, but a one-dimensional detector, which is, which is called a line detector. And uh, the, this way of scanning has some advantages. You're, you're uh, getting better data quality um, as such, because you're avoiding certain uh, unwanted uh, imaging behavior. But you can also obviously the disadvantage, because instead of having maybe just one rotation for a full part scan, you need several rotations, uh, hundreds or sometimes even thousands of rotations to scan the full part, because you're only detecting a, a line of the part or a slice of the part. Um, so those are the main uh, acquisition, what we call principles, so data acquisition principle of, uh, of X-ray CT imaging. And they are used in many of our equipment. Um, and uh, the equipment we have, uh, I would like to introduce you now um, in the different industries. So we have, we have, uh, we are covering a wide range of, 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 of systems here in our portfolio, which can, can, can be used in many different areas. And we try to to combine these into uh, the following area. So we have uh, a, a part of the portfolio, which is called the precision line, which is uh, an in-depth inspection approach. Um, um, so here's again, somebody. Yeah. Capturing this. Please, everybody, um, please make sure you're not sharing your screen. Um, can we figure yeah. out? Yeah, it's not it's too fast. I can't see it, unfortunately. Okay. So um, 
and uh, that is uh, so the precision precision line is mainly used for uh, for uh, laboratory applications, which we call in depth CT. So where you need to go into the detail of of, of your structure, where we have resolution down to uh, one micrometer. We have uh, four system uh, solutions in this part of the portfolio. The second part um, of our offerings is the so-called production line, which is quite the opposite of the precision line. So where you uh, where you have uh, inline solutions, which are main, 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 meant for factory applications, where you have to go fast, not so much into details, uh, but you you want to inspect in uh, typically less than one minute uh, the whole uh, part part of your structure and also uh, come to a decision is the part good or bad in a very quick manner. Uh, currently, we have uh, the X, 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 X cube line in this, and then two uh, CT scanners, the Vitamax C and the Speed Scan CT64 in that. Um, the portfolio is rounded up uh, with uh, the performance line, which is uh, which is focusing on the semiconductor and electronics industries, uh, where we have, in compared to this part of of the portfolio, where we always have horizontal. Uh, beam alignment, so we have the X-ray tube uh, on the one side and the detector on the other side and the part in the middle. We have a so-called vertical beam alignment where we have the X-ray tube on the top and the detector on the bottom. And here we then can, in this arrangement, very easily inspect flat parts like printed circuit boards or also parts of a circuit board, which can be a semiconductor or, or a part of a semiconductor or other components um, which are used in ele electronic manufacturing. Um, last but the least, we, we offer, as we mentioned, for whole waygate technology, also services and consulting. Um, as mentioned, we have a paper scan offering in, in our uh, customer solution center. We also offer our rental uh, of our equipment where you can uh, have a single part inspection or small series. And we can also offer our, our, our uh, um, experts to support that. Um, additionally, we have uh, operator training um, for users uh, who already have our equipment but need uh, for further insight into optimizing this. And then we offer for customized uh, application examples, also customized consultancy in the uh, different areas of expertise we just described. So that is an, an overview of, of uh, our um, uh, history, of our uh, overall Waygate paid for portfolio, the um, X-ray legacy uh, brands and the portfolio and the industry segments and challenges we are trying to address. Now I come to and that goes a little bit more into the details into what we have. What did we create recently? And by recently I mean the last two to three years. We la launched a lot of innovations in our portfolio, which helped to optimize the usage of the equipment. And um, this is what I would like to cover in the next, um, I would say, in the next 15 minutes. And uh, we, we have uh, arranged it along the following lines. So uh, the first one is for optimizing throughput. So as I've to uh, told you, we are we, our portfolio can be used both in the uh, laboratory space, in the R&D and engineering area, as well as in the, uh, um, uh, in, the, in the manufacturing space. And whereas for the first part of that comment, it is maybe not super critical to be fast. And the second, it is definitely. So here, time is of the essence. You want to come to your uh, result as quickly as possible. And I would like to give you an example um, what we have done in the last year to get to this. So um, I introduced this uh, conventional fan beam CT um, uh, a couple of minutes ago where uh, a scan is taking slice by slice. And due to the nature of that scanning, if you take several hundreds of slices and every, every slice takes a minute, you can easily uh, come to a conclusion that a CT scan takes hours. And uh, we introduced uh, technology what 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 is called scatter correct and dynamic 41 and high flux target, which can help to reduce the scan time by 10 times or even more. So we are able with this technology to reduce the scan time from hours to minutes, and that allows us to use to move uh, this kind of equipment from pure engineering R&D and laboratory application also to factory floors. And I'd like to give you some example what that means now. So. Um, so the average um, the average uh, scan time with conventional fan beam CTS set is typically hours. 
Now, um, what we introduced a few years ago was uh, the scatter correct, and uh, last year we even introduced the next step, which is called scatter correct 2, 2.0. And what this does is um, essentially we are measuring an effect which is inherent in all cone beams, so 3D CT settings. And that is when you take images at certain settings, you cannot avoid certain artifacts. That means when you use a conventional cone beam CT, you are fast because you're scanning not slice by slice, but you also have um, data quality issues. And that means you have certain what we call artifacts in the image. And a this is a cross section of a engine casting that's a linda head. And you see that should be aluminum and aluminum cross section uh, should have everywhere the same density. So, um, but the X-ray images actually is not showing that. So it shows brighter areas here in, 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 in this area and darker there. And that is something you want to avoid because you cannot, you cannot find maybe defects there. Um, there is a way to overcome that. You can go to Fanbeam CD, but then you are not at six minutes, but at 60 minutes. So, uh, and that means uh, uh, in, in order to, to um, to uh, come to a, 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 a point where you actually can leverage the six minute scans for the much faster, you need to have a technology which allows you to compensate these artifacts. And ScatterCorrect is the technology we, we created and we invented. And this allows us to measure these artifacts and eliminate them. And therefore we can have a very comparable data quality between, uh, between the conventional slow fan beam scanning and the uh, scatter corrected uh, fast scanning, um, and and, uh, and 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 therefore it allows us to apply this technology in areas in a productive way, which was not possible before. For instance, in the manufacturing of um, of cylinder heads casting or in the manufacturing of of turbine blades. So so this is this is this is one area where um, technology we developed helps to increase the productivity. Scatter correct saves per, per, per basically thirty percent or even more. Um, the other area is detectors. So when you have X-ray detectors, you need to make sure that these detectors are as sensible as possible and the resolution is is is, is as high as possible. Here you can see an advantage what a high resolution detector can bring you. So. And when you look at this radiograph of a $1 bill and you look at this uh, magnified area here in, in this rectangle, you see with um, a conventional 200 micrometer pixel detector, um, some of the features are unsharp. So, and then when you double basically the resolution by reducing the pixel size, you get a much sharper image. The disadvantage typically of going there is that you lose uh, sensitivity. Uh, what we what we were able to do by optimizing the electronics and the scintillator design is is to compensate for that. Or in other words, if you are staying with the same pixel size, you significantly increase the speed. In this example, um, which I just gave, uh, you 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 basically can cut in half again your scanning time from the six minutes to the three minutes because your detector has a higher sensitivity. Um, so we save 80% with scatter correct. We save another 50% with uh, the dynamic 41. And now we are at three minutes scan time. So from 60 or hours to less than five minutes uh, by two uh, technologies we have in our systems. Last bit of this is uh, X-ray technology. So we what we are able to do with what we call the high flux target is we can uh, at a, a, a uh, constant um, uh, output, uh, basically um, reduce, increase the sharpness or of, of the images, or with an increased uh, output of the source, we have a much, a much better um, uh, um, flux and signal to noise ratio. And that allows us again to cut in half the imaging from three minutes to 1.5, another 50%. So in total, these three inventions, the scatter correct, the detector technology, and the X-ray source technology we have in our systems allow us to basically cut in half uh, um, the scanning by uh, more than a factor of 10 uh, for a specific application. In this case, the application was uh, the inspection of, uh, of, X uh, of, of, of um, turbine blades. Uh, for aerospace industries, but the similar principle can be applied also for other applications. 
So that that is uh, in, a, in a short story how technology advancements can help to increase productivity of using X-ray systems, and by that allows to apply, for instance, CT technology in manufacturing and reduce, for instance, scrap rate or improve productivity with this technology, which wasn't possible before because it was simply too slow and therefore too expensive. Um, the, the other area I would like to briefly co cover is, is, is more towards the space when you need best potential data quality. So the, 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 the story I told you in the previous section was about productivity. Now I will go into the area of imaging. And um, here we have uh, recently launched a few uh, technology uh, um, features which help to improve uh, data quality. Um, one area is, is called helical scanning. So, um, and that's again a little bit technical again, but what helical scanning per basically does is it, it, it allows to cover long parts uh, with one scan by not just rotating the, the, the scan in the beam, but by moving the part in the um, direction of the rotation axis at the same time. So instead of uh, acquiring a circle, you're acquiring basically a helix. So you're rotating the part and at the same time you're moving the parts in the beam up or down. And, um, and that um, improves the dim image quality because you're avoiding certain associated artifacts. And when you scan, and this is a cross section of uh, of a stack of uh, CDs or DVDs, so which which uh, where you pretty obviously see when you go away from from the center of your imaging to the upper or lower area, that you create um, unsharpness um, and even you're not able to distinguish the different discs anymore. When you use the helical principle, uh, these artifacts can be avoided and you can get get much better image quality. Uh, another interesting feature is uh, is uh, what we call um, offset scanning. Uh, offset scanning is, is interesting because you're increasing the field of view of your system without um, actually uh, changing the um, uh, geometry. Uh, so what you can do is uh, you you can you can scan uh, the part um, at higher resolution, or you can you can uh, you can uh, scan a bigger part size by not scanning as conventionally what you would do in the center of the beam, but by scanning off center. So you can either scan uh, the same part at higher resolution, or you can scan a larger part at the same resolution as if you would do it without uh, the offset scan. So um, these are two examples um, of technology which uh, allow to improve data quality and again productivity because you're scanning bigger part size with the same system by applying smart um, software options. Uh, two other areas for, for data improvement are um, shown here. Uh, one is called um, the so-called adaptive scatter correct filter, which allows to improve the data quality again. Uh, when you when you look at this, and again, I, I've shown you the application of scatter correct, correct already in previous slides. In uh, in a specific uh, example like this, where you have um, an X-ray or a CT cross section of a very heavy uh, aluminum casting. Um, you see a lot of inhomogeneities in the densities because of the scatter artifact. Um, um, you still see defects like this, but you are starting to lose edges in the center. When you then apply scatter correct um, uh, 1.0, um, how we call it, you, you would improve the homogeneity here, but you start to lose uh, features like the cracks. And then with, an, with this uh, software filtering method called ASC, you combine both the detectabi detectability of the defect with um, um, better homogeneity of your data. So that, that, that is uh, another example how um, software filtering methods can help to improve data quality. Last but not the least, I would like to give a short introduction of our beam hardening correction methods. Beam hardening is again a CT related uh, imaging uh, uh, challenge or artifact um, uh, which uh, is created when you have uh, parts like, like this example here, uh, which is a um, simple electronic switch. Uh, so very, very simple, I don't know, one dollar or euro uh, component or even less. 
Um, but it shows very nicely what, what these artifacts can do. So you have uh, the housing, which is plastic, and then you have the switch part, which is another plastic, lower density, and then you have the metal pieces, the pins, and some of the contacts here in the switch. And you see that um, when you're getting close to these high density parts, um, high absorbing, you, you're, you're getting this, this kind of clouds around, uh, around the, uh, the, the metal, and you're also getting um, uh, apparent holes in the plastic. Uh, so, and then this is created by, by, a, by a physical beef, uh, um, uh, effect called beam hardening. Um, and uh, we have uh, developed software methods to significantly reduce uh, these effects. When you look at the, on the right with this uh, recent uh, software option of beam hardening, multi beam hardening correction, you A, reduce this cloud around the high absorbing parts, but B, are also able to significantly reduce these unwanted um, holes in the apparent holes in the uh, in the lower absorbing parts, and that you have, and that allows you to apply uh, further methods and image analysis. For instance, you're now able to to measure features and also detect defects. So so that that's the overview of uh, the beam hardening correction. The the last one. Um, uh, the, the last, oh no, this not the last. The, the last uh, focus area of of, uh, of my presentation here um, is uh, is productivity, um, and uh, by productivity I not I'm not talking about scan speed, um, and also not not talking about image quality. I, I talk about automation in the sense of uh, a uh, handling the part, but also b dispositioning uh, is a part good or bad. Um, and um, simple, in a simple way, we start with this. So instead of uh, just loading one part in the unit, we have created uh, mechanical devices, uh, which is called um, sample changing mechanism, which allows you to load, in this example, 10 parts, preload them, and then the system can uh, automatically process these parts um, independent from the operator um, in an automated manner, um, and by this you could uh, additional productivity. For instance, in off shift times, in in the night shifts when you don't have an operator, the the the, the last per person leaving the lab pre prepares, for instance, ten of these parts, uh, and then automatically configures the the system to process them auto uh, without uh, without operator interaction. And combine combined with this, we have uh, we also are able then to adjust. The extra parameters in an automated way, and one critical parameter is the so-called beam filtering, where you apply different thicknesses of material like copper or tin into the beam to, to, to shape the characteristic of the beam. And that, that the combination of uh, automated um, part changing with automated uh, filter changing gives you the need, uh, needed flexibility for automated processing of a lab uh, of parts in a, in a lab setting so that that that's uh, one part of productivity the other is the next step is then adding not just a batch processing inside the unit um, we also have solutions in uh, at customers where you combine an existing CT scanner with collaborative robot systems which are then totally um, uh, automatically uh, feeding uh, parts in and out of the system and by that have a fully automated workflow not just for the night shift but for a full 24 7 operation so and that, that's that's also available as uh, as um, uh, on request for for our for for parts of our portfolio. So that's the next step of the automation, and and the last step of automation I'd like to introduce now. And then I'll play this this little video here, which is also if you would like to see that on, on available on YouTube. Um, so that that would be then the full full step where you have a fully automated inline uh, CT scanner with microfocus technology. Uh, which we plan to introduce at the control show. Unfortunately, we couldn't do that. That's why we introduced in a, in a, in a virtual way. This is uh, designed for full 24-7 oper um, operation, manless, and not just the um, loading and unloading is uh, uh, executed with a robot, but also the part dispositioning is done uh, with an algorithm with which with so-called automated defect detection. And we have we have detected uh, we have created um, uh, proprietary technology for processing certain certain defects in, in battery types, for example. Um, and this is a, a, a um, an example for a battery inspection inside the system. 
um, which is uh, which is then handled fully automatically from uh, part identification, loading, unloading, scanning. Here you can see that in the system now of uh, running, unloading, and then uh, the the final uh, pass fail decision um, on the uh, different uh, defects types. In this case. The application would be a battery, but we we have a uh, different um, uh, a, a wide range of applications which can be covered with such a such, such a sy sy uh, system. And um, the SpeedScan HD is uh, launched this year, um, and I would like to bring your attention to this. Um, more information can be uh, can be uh, gathered from the web page, can be gathered from uh, from additional sessions um, uh, uh, by and, and hosted by our teams. Um, around the globe. So as said, an inline CT inspection solution with a high, re high resolution and a very short cycle time, fully automated uh, for complex assemblies such as batteries. Um, just to give you a short summary um, on, on, on this system in terms of the performance, uh, it, it, it is a system meant for up to 100% pro uh, uh, process control um, to optimize the process to reduce the scrap and improve productivity uh, and get it uh, to a, a zero defect production um, in, in the best case. We designed it for uh, high uptime, 24 7 operation, and as said, very high resolution with a combined with a short scanning time and a, uh, a significant scanning size of uh, 200 millimeter height and 150 millimeter in diameter. Um, here you see some insight, and I said, um, should there be more question to this specific technology, you can uh, reach out to our teams um, afterwards. Uh, last but not the least, um, and uh, is is a brief intro uh, into the uh, metrology space, and we will have additional ses sessions about metrology tomorrow. Um, so that's why I will uh, not spend so much time on it, just to um, give a short introduction. What is metrology? So metrology is um, the, 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 the application of X-ray CT for probing the dimension of parts. And by that, uh, by, by, because you use X-ray, you're not just uh, uh, measuring the outside of the part, but also the inside. That means both uh, hidden uh, features and undercuts, but also um, you are able to look inside the material and, and find defects. And then you can combine traditional nominal actual comparison, that means the cut model with the actual part, with uh, the probing of uh, complex and hidden features, and combining this with the detection of internal uh, defects. So that is a very unique combination of applications and can be used in a wide variety of spaces, for production ramp ups, tool correction, optimization of process uh, processes, uh, the process control, assembly control, quality control, and of course, um, an analysis of field failure, failures. So combining non-destructive testing with metrology is, is a unique um, uh, um, application which only X-ray CT can provide with one, um, with one uh, uh, method and one sensor. Um, we have uh, a lot of uh, um, um, Sophisticated technology launched recently on that. Um, our CT scanners contain uh, our core components, detectors and tubes, uh, which we understand the best and are able to, to, to compensate for re remaining uh, uh, uncertainties. We, we can apply a combine um, uh, the te technology of, of high data quality with metrology, and we have uh, sophisticated methods to correct geometric uncertainties with uh, methods like true position and ruby plate, which we will share more details about in the upcoming sessions. But all these combines allow us uh, to come to a, a, a very high um, specified uncertainty, which we measure uh, on phantoms like this. Um, to be uh, 3.8 micrometers uh, plus L divided by 100 according to the VDI 2630 1.3 standard. Um, so uh, th that is uh, giving us the opportunity, and here you can see a graph uh, how uh, a system would behave without the correction methods we apply. So you see with increased measuring lengths, you get a higher error. And then it will be eventually at a certain length outside the, 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 the defined tolerances. With the um, uh, applied technology we have, you are able to bring this down from, from this to this. And therefore, 
allow a, um, allow a, a very uh, high measurement accuracy in, in a big range of, of, of parts uh, and dimensions to be probed um, and uh, gives you a, a very a very broad range of potential applications in the metrology space. As said, metrology will be covered in detail tomorrow by my, my colleague Florian. Um, and a lot of the imaging, um, which I was talking about, will be di di uh, discussed in detail by my my by my by my, my, my other colleague uh, Holger uh, on on Thursday. To wrap up, uh, again, uh, we we covered the portfolio. Um, we covered uh, of of Wayga technology specifically in X-ray, um, the different applications. Um, I would like to mention again. Uh, in case of additional questions, we have still around 10 minutes, right, Jan, um, now. Um, and uh, yes. uh, please uh, don't hesitate to ask them now uh, or reach out to uh, Hans Uwe or myself, um, and then you can uh, get uh, additional answers uh, to, to these questions. And we, again, would like to mention our additional um, uh, uh, um, additional uh, ways to, to communicate with you, uh, both from a uh, demonstration perspective, so we, we, are, we are here to, to demo individually uh, on your specific need, um, and we are also broadcasting, quote unquote, um, in additional webinars this week and the coming weeks. Um, and yeah, thanks for your attention.